Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are listening to the Flick Connection Podcast, the show that helps you get more out of movies. Uh, We are on episode 21. Uh, Last episode was exclusively a guest. Uh, I want to thank again uh, Gino Caffarelli for coming on the show. I really, really enjoyed talking to him. Uh, Looking forward to seeing his movie Cruise. If you listen to that episode, his movie Cruise comes out. We talked about it at length, but it comes out uh, this Friday, September 28th in select theaters, so look in your area, but it will be available on streaming platforms, iTunes, Amazon Prime. You'll be able to rent it. So if you're interested in that movie like I am, go check that out. Uh, This episode, another guest. Uh, I am going to talk about two topics before the guest that uh, people have really been sort of bugging me about. You know, with having a guest, you don't always get to talk about whatever sort of is going on in the news. And then I'm going to share with you a pre-recorded interview with Derek Hagen. Uh, Derek is a really cool guy I've been wanting to have on the show for a while. We finally made it work. I was very excited to talk to him because he has got an incredible story about what happens when you just say, fuck it, we're making a movie. So he is in, I know some of you have seen it because I've recommended it more than once. There's a movie on Amazon Prime called I Had a Bloody Good Time at House Harker. It's a fun, it, I guess you could say it's like a horror comedy, but it's not really. It's got its own flavor, very, very much more like a Shaun of the Dead, uh, where yes, it's a comedy, but it's like, it, it is still a good zombie movie. This one is about vampires. It's got a cool vibe. They did a great job with it. Uh, We'll talk more about that in the interview, but uh, they basically, you know, were doing internet videos and then just decided to make a feature length movie, release it. So I had a good time talking with him about, you know, what that's like, not just to like jump in, you know, head first into producing and, and creating a movie with basically no budget or at least no no real experience and and really not much of a budget to speak of uh and then to release it and how do you get it in front of people and he's got some really cool stories associated with that additionally we talk about some of our favorite movies you know really like some cool horror movies like peter jackson's early movies so i really really had a good time talking with him i i foresee having him on again in the future uh so that's all coming up First, I want to talk about the new Joker. So all these images have been coming out all week. There's even some footage of Joaquin Phoenix as the new Joker. So this movie has been announced for a little while. He's been announced as the character. I'm very interested in this. Now, of all the actors working today, honestly, I think he might be the best option. I would be hard-pressed to come up with a better option. There might be some that are maybe as good or good alternatives, but better? He is such a powerful actor. I mean, if you did not see You Were Never Really Here, his last movie that came out, really, really just incredible work. I mean, he he really is something else. And he has been for a while, but he just keeps getting better. So for him to take on this character is really cool. Some people are already hating on it because it's like, why are they doing this? It's just going to be like another prequel, like like Solo. And it's like, dude, okay. So basically what this movie is going to be, and I know I, I can go, I'm going to go ahead and call it and say people are going to be disappointed with this movie. doesn't mean it's going to be a bad movie. It doesn't mean people aren't going to like it. But there's going to be a large segment of the audience that is disappointed with this movie. It is not going to be, from what I understand, it is not going to be a movie about the Joker. It's going to be a movie about a man who becomes the Joker. So it's not going to be necessarily, you know, I, I doubt there's going to be any sort of incarnation of Batman in it. Maybe there's going to be references But it's going to be about someone losing their mind and breaking and becoming this character that this villain that we all love so much. He doesn't even really look like the Joker. He's got like blue paint on, you know, white face, but like blue and red paint. Uh, But it's the earliest incarnation of it. So I doubt we're even going to see him in the movie in full makeup for very long. I would imagine it's going to be later in the movie. So I think really this is going to be more almost like Taxi Driver where a guy snaps, but instead of saving a girl from a brothel, he's going to become the Joker. So that that's kind of where I'm thinking it's going to go. I like everything I know about it except one thing, and that's the director, Todd Phillips. Now, I don't have a problem with it, but I'm certainly not jumping up and down over the fact that Todd Phillips is writing and directing this movie, just because I haven't seen 
the ability for him to handle a project like this. You know, if I'm calling it, if I'm thinking it's going to be, and they're, they're sort of calling it the, the taxi driver of, you know, comic book movies, uh, that's a big claim, and they may not have said those exact words, but they're sort of selling it as that type of a thing. Robert De Niro's even in it. So I think that's really where their heads are at on this one. And it makes perfect sense, by the way. I love it. But Todd Phillips, if you don't know, he directed Old School and The Hangover. Like, yeah, those movies are funny, and it's interesting that a comedy director is going to make this sort of, like, tragic comedy. So it's interesting. But then his last movie, War Dogs, with Jonah Hill, about the arms dealers, showed some promise. It had some flaws. I didn't love that movie, but I liked a lot of things about it. So there's potential here, and I think it's probably going to be pretty good. But I'm a little apprehensive at the Todd Phillips aspect. But that's, that's my thoughts on, on where we're going with the Joker thing. It's a little odd that they're teasing out so many images, but I think that just has to do with the day and age we're in. They know people are going to share them. Shit, I did it. Uh, you know, the, that, that kind of stuff just goes viral. It's been all the buzz this week to the point that I'm surprised that they keep, like you keep seeing more and more images of them. Um, I don't, like they already have my money. Like I, just out of pure curiosity, I'm going to go see this movie. Um, I don't need it promoted to death. Hopefully they don't give away a lot, uh, you know, regarding the production. But that, that said, they, they've got my money. I'm going to be going to watch it. I, I, Joaquin Phoenix, at this point, at this point in time, 2018 rolling into 2019, he can do no wrong in my opinion. So I, I, I am very much looking forward to that. And then the one other thing I wanted to touch on real quick is this whole business. I should have talked about it last week. Is uh, Norm MacDonald getting booted off of Jimmy Fallon's show? Now, the reason I talk about this is it does involve actors, and Norm MacDonald has been a longtime favorite of mine. Um, and, you know, the weird thing is he's a longtime favorite of people like Jimmy Fallon, too. So the story here is that uh, there was a Hollywood Reporter article where Norm MacDonald expressed his feelings about the Me Too movement. And without quoting him directly, he essentially said that he felt like it got out of hand and that there was no due process, and he hates to see uh, innocent men have their careers ruined and lives ruined uh, just because we're supposed to believe every single woman that has an accusation. Now, he may have made a little bit of a mistake there by not even citing an example. And the best example, I say best or worse, depending on how you want to use your language, is Chris Hardwick. Now, Chris Hardwick was just found to be completely, like there was a full investigation into claims an ex-girlfriend made that he was abusive and he, you know, there was a long laundry list of things. I don't even think it was sexual abuse, but it was physical abuse, emotional abuse, uh, that he was holding back her career. It was this whole laundry list of things that he was quote-unquote, indirectly yet very directly accused of publicly by an ex-girlfriend who's basically a failed actress. So it was suspicious from the get-go. Uh, and then he was cleared. He basically got his name removed from websites he's associated with. Nerdist.com uh, is, is a, a, a blog or company he's worked with and for for the better part of a decade, I think, maybe longer. Some of you will know better than me. Um, he's on multiple shows. He got pulled from all of it. Networks and, and whatnot did it, digging, did an investigation, determined they could find no evidence that he was that type of person. Basically, no one to corroborate any of it, which to me is fairly airtight, just in the sense that uh, the type of guy that would do something the w like the way she described, he would do it to more than one person. Like the type of person that can be that cruel is not that cruel to one person only ever in their life and never that cruel to anyone again. Like it, it that makes no sense. So what, what does make sense is a bitter ex-girlfriend who didn't get famous is mad that he got famous and married into a billionaire family. And she sort of like half-ass accused him of some shit in a way that 
she knew he would get shit for, but that she might be in the clear. And she's totally fine. There's nothing, nothing has happened to her. She's in the clear. She, she should probably be brought up on charges, but, uh, or at least be sued for damages, but um, nothing has happened to her. So Norm MacDonald, I'm, I'm getting off the beaten track, but Norm MacDonald did not address that which is fine. He didn't have to, but he said he thought the Me Too movement had overreached, had gotten out of hand. He doesn't understand why, you know, it used to be that, you know, we, we needed to listen to all women. Then it needed to be that women can't lie. And now it needs to be, we believe all women, no matter what. And it's like, of course, that doesn't make sense. Like even it, the women out there listening to me or the, the men that happen to disagree with me, just think about the people, you know, in your life. You can just trust all of them. Think about only the women you know in your life. You just, you, could, you just trust all of them, everything that they say. No, it doesn't make any a fucking sense. It's stupid. And that's all Norm MacDonald's saying. And at the same time, Bill Burr said almost the same exact... It, it's common sense, which is why all these people are saying it. Bill Burr said almost the same thing on Conan, like the same week. And then, I, I think around the same week, Sean Penn, who is like the furthest far left guy, or at least he used to be, He's the same guy, but the left side has gone so far now that Sean Penn is like somewhere lost in the middle. Uh, he said almost verbatim the same thing. So um, it's not that controversial of a statement. However, apparently grown men uh, as part of, you know, part of uh, Jimmy Fallon's production team were crying in the back office while Norm MacDonald was on set. And so Jimmy Fallon didn't know what to do. He went and talked to Norm and essentially Norm's in the green room. The show's about to start and Jimmy Fallon makes the decision to cancel Norm MacDonald. Is Norm MacDonald getting canceled off the Jimmy Fallon show that big a deal? In and of itself, no. But as a precedent for future behavior and what's acceptable and not acceptable, it is a big deal. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's a very big deal. Now I'm not freaking out about it and you know how these things work, you know, the pendulum swings, somebody overreaches in a situation like that. So it sort of swings back the other way because people get pissed. So I'm not overly concerned about it, but I certainly don't like it as a practice. I think it's pretty terrible. And I, you know, again, to say something that most people agree with that, of course, of course, some women lie. Of course, some women would lie about what a man did to them if they could benefit from it. Guarantee. Like, that's not even, that shouldn't even be up for debate. But that also shouldn't be used to, like, silence all women. That should be what's discussed. And maybe, maybe when some of these guys go to question a movement like Me Too that's popular in the media... They could throw in a caveat like that. I certainly don't think they need to because I think it's common sense. But in America right now, people have lost their minds and common sense seems to be out of the window. So I think you have to spell things out for people in order to make it work. But uh, I was a little bummed to hear that, man. I've, I'm a fan of Norm MacDonald. In fact, part of the reason I'm even talking about this is because I talk so much about Netflix. He, the reason he was going to be on Fallon is he's got a new show, which is exactly like his old show, but it's a cool, it's like a podcast kind of format where he's just talking with somebody that he knows well, like David Spade or somebody for like uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that. Uh, so it's very free flowing. It's fun. Like I, I, I like it. Luckily I got to see it because I knew it was coming out and then I heard all this news and I'm like, oh shit, Netflix, you know, the company where, uh, uh, people, I don't even think it's people of opposite sex. I think you can't make, uh, there's a rule in their, their code of conduct that you can't make eye contact with somebody for more than five seconds. And I think that includes, consecutively rather, I'm under the impression that includes if you're having a conversation with them, which is psychotic. So I heard this, I'm like, well, shit, they're going to can Norm show. It's about to be released. They're just not going to release it. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Cooler heads prevailed. The show's on. There's no fuss. So it's not even that big of a story. So if you like this format where I sort of address some of the stuff that I normally would on the show and then follow it up with a guest, let me know in the comments. I'm still trying to figure out the format of the show. Guests are definitely going to be a part of the show. Uh, but 
last week when I didn't do this and I didn't talk and sort of share some thoughts, I kind of got some people a little aggravated with me. <laughs> so ultimately what I might do is I might just do two episodes, but right now that's just not even, oh, bumping into the mic here. Uh, right now that's just not even possible to do two one hour shows a week. Now, eventually it will be. Because what I'm getting ready to I promise we're getting ready to jump into the interview. I really want you to stay for it because I Dan I keep calling him Dan and I do that. That's the thing I do. Once I get someone's name wrong once, I it's forever fucked in my head. Like it's over. So uh, I really want you to hear Derek. Uh he was a great guest and uh just such an interesting perspective from somebody who just like created this really cool little movie and then it's just trying to get people to see it like it's it's a really good story so stick around for that but i do want to say i just hit thirty thousand subscribers on youtube now for those of you again if you're just now discovering me on the podcast channel i know i don't even have a thousand subscribers i just started this channel it takes time but on the main Flick Connection channel, just broke 30,000 over the weekend. Could not be more excited. Some of you already know, my goal for 2018 was to hit 5,000 subscribers, and I just hit 30 right here at the end of, of September. In fact, it's probably gonna, it, in fact, it's gonna be 31 by, by the time I finish recording uh, this session. So super excited about that. What that means and why it's relevant is I very much could be doing this full time within the next year. If that's the case, there is going to be more podcasts. I should have better, I shouldn't say better. I, I really want guests like Gino and Derek. I've got a couple more lined up. Those are the types of guests I want. I just want to have good guests regularly. And I want to have uh, maybe another episode a week where it's just me sort of talking about, you know, the stuff you want to hear. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, but I cannot do it now. Um, some of you already know I've got two young kids. It's incredible. I'm able to get this stuff done that I, I am able to get done. Uh, so I'm hanging in there trying to do as much as I can, but the volume of work will increase as soon as I, I'm doing this full time, which again, I'm thinking it's quite possibly going to be in the next six to 18 months. 18 being the absolute longest, six being the just rocket speed fastest possible. Uh, so that that's kind of where we're at. So that's an update on everything I have to share with you this week. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, let me know in the comments if you want me to keep doing that. But here is the interview. It runs about an hour with Derek. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And I will be back next week. So, uh, cool. I'm glad to uh, finally get you on. We've been talking about it for a little while. And uh, just, I've already, you know, introduced you, but um, House Harker, uh, that's what I want to talk about the most. Obviously, I want to get into just some movies we both like. We've, I've, I've got actually a list of movies we need to talk about. But before that, I want to know, so, well, first off, I'll just say, I just stumbled across House Harker. Uh, on Amazon, and luckily Amazon, unlike Netflix, it lets you watch the trailers. Um, interested in the trailer, gave it a, I, I think it was like homesick one day and just watched it, and then watched it again with my wife, either that night or the next night. So that's always a sign of a good movie. And then uh, reviewed it, and then you reached, you you commented on that video, and so that's kind of how we we, uh, we met and got to know each other. But I, I just want to know more about that, that whole process and... Um, you know, kind of how that how that movie even kind of came to be. Where do we start from the very beginning? Um, there's yeah, so yeah, well, we'll talk more about like uh, good cops and uh, okay. uh, just sort of some of the stuff you guys have done before. But like, you know, the decision to just like make a feature length was... film. Yeah, let's okay. start there. Okay. Well, that was a poker game. I started at a poker game with my buddy Noel Carroll, uh, Clayton Cogswell, and Jacob Gibbons, and they they are my business partners as well. And uh, I had this wacky idea for a web series. Uh, I didn't have a name for it. I, I didn't know where it was going. I just knew that I wanted it to be like these these idiots, these brothers that claim they're descendants of the last vampire hunter. 
and um, they put on a show. They have like a museum that people go in, and there's like all these little artifacts that they have from like their family, but everyone thinks it's fake. And and then um, one like one episode, like a vampire comes. Another episode, maybe a you know a werewolf, and so on. It was kind of like uh, Hardy Boys meets. Um, uh, what's that? What's that crazy movie that I, I can't even think of right now? Ah, uh, the the werewolf has nards. What's that movie called? Uh, Monster Squad. Monster Squad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 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 that kind of feel, you know, that '80s feel and stuff. And um, I so I pitched to the guys, not knowing if they would like it or anything. And then we just started talking about it and joke after joke. And Clayton was coming up with ideas. It was just making us laugh. Jacob just all of a sudden threw, oh, what if they, they were, you know, coming, what if they were like related to the Harkers, like Jonathan and Mina Harker? And we're just like, oh my God, it's funny. Like two hours passed and uh, Clayton, our, our director, uh, said, this isn't a web series. This is, this is a fucking movie. Yeah. And we got really excited and, um, and then we just kept talking about it and then decided to actually start writing a, a script um about two years two years later we had a script that we really liked and we had a meeting at this burger place and uh uh we were actually trying to figure out what our next move was because we haven't worked on anything in a while and uh we're like well are we gonna shut the doors are we gonna start working on commercials and and, and save money and then make our own stuff you know what do we want to do and then our director clayton came and he, I don't know, he had, it was really weird that night. He just, he came and he had a certain energy about him and he sits down and he's like, gentlemen, I know what we're going to do next. And, and I, and we're like, what? We're going to make a fucking movie. And we're like, what? <laughs> it's like, so I really been thinking about House Harker. And, and I think at that time too, I actually went and visited uh, Wisconsin a few times and I sent pictures to the gang and Clayton really liked the idea of filming in Wisconsin and um, loved the different, like, like if you go to where I live, you're magically whisked back to the, like the 1980s almost, you know, where things just kind of slow down a little bit. And it's just, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's very awesome there as well. But at the same time, you know, not a lot of tech stuff there going on. It's, it's very, it, people are just, you know, keep themselves or, or a lot of families and stuff like that. But it has that like 80s feel. And I always felt like in Wisconsin too, it was very cinematic. And I don't think a lot of people film there enough. Yeah. And so, so that was, so that was kind of like Clayton was saying, let's do this. And I know he didn't do this, but in my head, he stood up on a table and gave us like dead poet society speech and was like, we have to do this, you know, save the day. And um, we all got excited. We're like, make a movie with not having any idea how yeah. we we're going to make a movie <laughs> at this time, you know, not having a clue. You know, I think our budget started at, you know, two million and then just went down <laughs> to yeah. what is you know, a couple of dollars. Let's we'll throw it at the screen and let's let's make this thing. And that's kind of really how how it sparked from from that from that time he said that I think four months later me and Clayton were in a car uh, we we drove up about a week earlier before the cast and crew and we got there uh, right before Halloween and oh, wow. uh, and we we started setting things up working like. 12, 14 hour days doing uh, rehearsals, uh, building sets, uh, painting walls. I had my dad and my nephew build a set for us at one time. Um, just a lot of friends and family coming out of the woodwork. You know, I was just like calling any, every favor I could. And um, even my buddy, uh, Alan Cragen became a co-producer on the thing eventually just because he just did so much. He had to call the mayor at one point so we could get a shot at the courthouse. And it was just insanity how fast it went and then how many problems just kept coming up and how we had to kind of be like, well, we don't have the money. We can't write a check 
at this problem? How do we figure it out? How do we how do we do it creatively and how do we make it better? How do we make it work for us? And that was definitely the challenges constantly. And and one of them being uh, blizzards. We had yeah. we went through three blizzards uh, during the filming of this, uh, which we got there. So we started filming November 4th of 2014. And, uh, uh, they, we were told that, that, uh, blizzards would probably get there. We're going to get hit by snow by first week of December. Yeah. That's why we went out early November. November 12th, we we're hearing rumors that we were going to get hit by a blizzard. And we did <laughs> three yeah. times. It just hit us like so hard. And I remember we had like, we had times, there was one time where, we figured like we're, we need shots outside still. We need grass on the ground. Like, but we're running out of time. We didn't know what we were going to do. And my, my dad was like, you know, I have that, I have this huge tarp and just throw it on the lawn, let it snow and then pick it, you know, shovel the snow off and then pick it up and you have grass. I'm like, that's genius. <laughs> so I remember like two in the morning, me and my buddy uh, and my partner, Noel, we go to, to my dad's garage. It's like this huge tarp. And it looks like it's it's like a dead body, you know, like wrapped up in this thing. And so I tell Noel, I said, if we're going to carry this, let's just carry it like a dead body all the way to uh, set. Because we, we stayed at my parents' house, and then set was about three blocks away. And so like two in the morning, we're carrying a, like a this looks like a dead body like this. Yeah. <laughs> and we see somebody. I'm like, oh, that has to be crew. And we get really close, and I'm like, Oh, that's not crew. Some guy outside walking his dog at two in the morning and, uh, we're just walking by and he's looking at me. I'm looking at him and he's like, evening, evening. <laughs> and we just like, <laughs> it's just like, uh, I love that he didn't say anything. We didn't say anything. I'm sure he probably heard that we were doing something up. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably kind of knew what was going on, but still it was a, it was a, interesting time doing that but that's kind of how how it got started and then we just went on from that that's probably a, a long well, no no, no that's, that's good that's, that's what i was curious about because well, one you mentioned the snow so i'll jump ahead the uh, and i, I don't want to give away any um spoilers because i do want people to go see the movie you can watch it right now on amazon prime is there anywhere else i guess like you could you could rent it on any streaming service huh no it's just amazon right now okay the states if you you are in Germany, you can buy the Blu-ray. Uh, okay. Uh, we do have, have we, we made a deal with them. Um, um, Shoreline Entertainment is our sales company, and they uh, made a deal uh, with Germany. And then Spain, I think you can buy the DVD. If you're in China, you can watch it on Fox <laughs> at midnight <laughs> really? once in a while. Yeah, so it's – it's uh, but we just got started in the States, and hopefully, you know, we'll – We'll have other places that you can watch it. And I think we're, you know, trying to get on different, you know, networks as, as much as possible. But well, I, I want to talk about that. But before we move on from the snow, I do remember in the movie, uh, and again, I don't want to like spoil anything. I basically, what I try to do on the channel is I try not to say anything that you wouldn't find out from just watching the trailer. Okay. But, the, but the thing I really liked about this sort of the climax of the movie is I do remember. Like snow collected on the ground throughout the last like 15 minutes or so, yeah. and it. But it. But I remember thinking, I'm like, because I, I think about this stuff. This is how I watch movies. I'm like, did they have a snow machine? Because it collected, as I recall, fairly evenly. Like it on the way the movie's edited, it oh. came. It built up over the course of that evening. The way you guys cut it together. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh. We did some CGI because of that. Oh, okay. Put some in certain scenes uh, so you could see snow because in some of the first cuts, people are, like, really shocked <laughs> on the – I don't want to give the ending away, but uh, uh, at the end, how much snow, you know, uh, is there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was that was uh, John Inge. He did all the visual effects, and he went in there and uh, did that for us so, and, and looked great. So you can't yeah. sometimes. Because that worked out, and then I remember, so, and I'm not just gushing because I had you on here as a guest. This is something I really, <laughs> I really noticed, like, when I first was watching the movie. Because at first, you know, I noticed it is a, I, I, you know, I watch enough movies, I noticed it's a very low-budget movie. But mm -hmm. I'm watching the, uh, the, the, 
couple of stage production in the beginning where you guys are, I guess it was, if I, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen it now, but uh, sure. uh, you guys are doing like a rehearsal or maybe there was like a guest there or something, but it was, there was nobody in the room yeah. and uh-huh. there's the gag with the knife and everything. I'm like, this is edited together really well. It, like for for humor uh, purposes, and I'm always I'm still like baffled by that in any movie that's funny, and like how you can do some write something funny, film it, and then edit it with the comedic timing, and have it all have it go through those stages that are all really far apart production wise, and still have it land to me sitting on my couch, like still have that like right timing. It's always it always baffles me how oh. that's quite impossible. <laughs> That has to go to um, Clayton Cogswell. He is the director, and then he was our uh, main editor. Um, so he, uh, I've edited some things on different projects that we did, but he is by far the superior editor. He's actually taught me a, a bunch of things just sitting and watching him. It's probably I got learned more from him than like any school I could have gone to. Um, so yeah, he. When he's directing, he, I don't know how he does it, you know, but it's, it's like in his head, you know, I always yeah. call him like a beautiful mind. Um, because he like, cause he'll, he'll tell us like what he's doing. Like that doesn't make any sense. But then, and then, then he puts it all together and like, oh, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And so, so we just kind of trust him a lot, you know, I and mean, he's earned that trust over the yeah. years on other things that we've done. And, uh, um, so that's this, just what he does and um he's he, and, and to his credit i will i will tell this story too um because of the blizzards we had to scrap a lot of stuff and realize that we, we were shooting in california so there are scenes that are seamless that that no one's ever pointed out to me that oh that's california and oh that's wisconsin like it goes back and yeah forth, i didn't notice back and, I, I didn't notice that yeah. you weren't in a different in a, in a different place at all yeah, um, and, I, uh, and I watched it twice, and I, I do. I feel like I notice those things when they're not done right. But I can, I can tell you that this won't give anything away. The deputies, the two mm. guys that play the mm. deputies, um, they, they were never in Wisconsin. Okay. Not okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, that's good to know. That that's a good uh, thing to share because when I go back and watch it, I was like, uh, I want to say they were like on the doorstep at some point. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All yeah, right. They're, That's they're pretty good. They're at the uh, they're in the the morgue yeah. scene, and then they're at the uh, the scene where they're at the uh, the courthouse, and the okay. town the whole town is like there. And yeah. They're there, but they're not there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The the one guy I, that stands out to me, I guess he's the one with the mustache, unless they both had mustaches. He was really good. I remember well, him he's kind of sure. standing he out. Definitely, That's right. Definitely in Wisconsin. Uh, okay. Okay. But the the two guys that play the the, the deputies. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they they were not. Sorry. Yeah. That would have been really impressive. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, and I'm I'm fuzzy on like how many times we saw him. I just remember him standing out to me. And then the uh uh okay, what is your name? Whitney Moore, how did you guys come about her? Was that just a, a standard casting thing, or? Um, that was a Noel Carroll, I think he, we worked for, um, we worked for Machinima on a few different things, and so he made, I think we just, I think we, he might have worked with her at one point, and yeah. then um, just was like, hey, do, do you want to audition for this? And, um, I mean, I, in my opinion, she got the part before she even auditioned, you know, and, and then when she auditioned, I was just like, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, well, it was like, she was on camera for maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. And I'm like, oh, it's the girl from Birdemic. Yeah. And then I was like, well, sh-, you know, I was like, oh, well, it'll be one of those kind of movies, but she was good in it. She, which, but I will say she was not good in Birdemic in the best way possible because the the direction on that was so horrific. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine. I mean, that's what's so beautiful about that movie. But uh, I was surprised. I mean, she, she was surprising in this one. I, I, I like that. It was kind of cool to see her, too, because it kind of added – it was kind of a little wink and a nod, I think, to – the, the type of movie you were wanting to make, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And she, and she was fantastic. She, she killed it. I remember yeah. even seeing her first performance in Wisconsin and I looked at Clayton. I'm like, she's, she's too good for us. Like she, she, she was like, she was just amazing. The performance she gave and she like, we're like, okay, we have to, we have to get on this level. 
And, um, but she, she was a trooper in, in every level and she had some great stories on Bird, 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 uh, Demick. And, uh, and then just, I know she flat out said on, on her audition, she's like, you know, she saw the movie. She, she I don't want to, you know, I don't know if she wants me to say how, what she feels about it, but she did say that movie has gotten her so much work, you know? And, yeah. uh, uh, I think that's great, you know, and that's, and that's, that's what a movie should do for a working actor or anybody that works on a movie. If you can keep getting work from it, that well, and especially on something like that, because she could have easily just been like embarrassed by that. But people love that movie. I've watched it quite a few times. I have and, too. Uh, <laughs> she, I mean, just lean into it. It seems like she leaned into it and did a good really job. Did. And it's not like it's it's not like she's not capable of doing a good job. So that was I thought it was cool that she was in it as well. And then didn't you tell me your mom was your yeah. Okay, so your mom was the neighbor. My mom was the crazy neighbor in the middle. Okay, of the cool. Because she, we made her audition. Yeah, um, she did a good job. I never would have suspected she was family. <laughs> yeah, she. Um, well, my my friends, my I told my my business partners. I said, hey, we should. I think I think my mom would do really good as Mavis. And they're like, and they've met my mom, and she's just a sweetheart, you know. And, uh, and they're like, no, your mom's too nice. We, you know, we need somebody that's, you know, really that, that you want to eventually, I don't want to give it away, but you have to be angry at. And, uh, and I was like, I think I could get her mad at me if, if we put her in that. <laughs> like, I was like, I've seen different sides of my mother and, uh, uh, I, I think she could pull up. So we were at, we were doing location scouting and this was like uh, maybe two months before we actually, uh, filmed. And, uh, we gave my mom, my mom, <laughs> she's going to hate this, but she drank, I think she, she says she didn't drink this much, but I think she drank at least two bottles of wine and we gave her a BB gun and she did the audition and she took her teeth out and she was just wild. And I keep telling like, who has that footage? Cause I, I love to put it oh, on yeah. behind the scenes and we can't find it now. Oh, we, no. we recorded it. I think it was on somebody's phone too. And, uh, but we were just dying. We were laughing and, and, uh, uh, Clayton and it was, it was Clayton's decision too. I said, I, I, I didn't want to be biased or anything. So I was just like, it's your decision. You know, we'll live with whatever you decide. I think, I thought she was great and he's, he agreed and, uh, he, so she got that part on her own merit and she just killed that audition. <laughs> <laughs> she did great. She did great. Yeah, no, and she, she, she stood out in the movie. I, I was surprised when you told me that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and she was also our cook. She oh, cooked all nice. our food. Uh, her and um, our executive producer Adam Lee, who was one of our unsung heroes. Uh, you know, without him, the movie wouldn't have been made. Um, not only was he the executive producer, he was pretty much a, a PA on set. He did. He had to do so much. Um, there was times where he had to drive from Washburn to uh, Minneapolis, which is about a three and a half, four hour drive, depending on, you know, how much snow you're getting. Um, so, yeah, so he and then he also had to drive to Duluth, which is about 40 minutes away. So back and forth, picking people up, dropping things off. Uh, we we uh, we froze a lens once <laughs> yeah. and it, it cracked and we had to order an, another one, which was expensive. And, uh, that there was a scene where we go in, in and out of a house and it was getting really hot and then we get cold and then bam, the, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was tough. Um, there was another scene that we're talking about accidents. I'll I'll keep going. (laughs) One of the, the big one was, um, the the house that we were using, house Harker, that was my dad's partner's house. Her, Her name's Barb Cooney. I basically make, uh, what they do is they, uh, buy houses and they fix it up and then they, they sell them. And, uh, my dad does a lot of the fixing up stuff. Well, this was in the fixer upper stage. So we thought the house would be perfect for that. And, uh, um, however, there, there is a, a window, oh, um, in there that is, we didn't know this, um, was etch, all etch glass, beautiful etch glass. And, um, I'll, I'll tell you in a little bit. Uh, uh, why that's so significant. Um, we, we had a lot of good people work on, on the movie, not a lot of people with a lot of experience. And that being said, I'm not, you know, we weren't mad or anything. We also knew that, you know, when you're doing something like this, you don't, you don't always know what 
to do, you know, and um, we had to put tarps up on the walls and stuff and on the windows. We had a gentleman who was our PA, he was a really great guy. He's in the movie too. And uh, he was, he put a nail by the, the window and accidentally hit the window and it cracked yeah. you know, like that. But over a few days, it kept cracking all the way down. And we found out later on that the, that the edge glass was a hundred year old <sighs> edge glass. By the way, there's about 30 frickin' windows in this house. And that's <laughs> that the one. one. That one. And we had to cover all the windows. That yeah. was the one that got, that got cracked. And it was, I think it was like, I don't know. We, and we, we had, we paid for it. You know, we, we yeah. broke it. And so I think it was like 2% of our budget. Like, oh man. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was that, that hurt. <laughs> that yeah. Hurt. But, but that was just, that's what you, you those are the challenges that you're going to do when you, when you, uh, go make a movie and you never made a movie and, uh, um, and, uh, you just have to figure it out and you have to, you know, be good, I think on your word and stuff and then what, and what you're going to do. Um, but that was challenging for sure. <laughs> so, so you go through all this, you know, you make the movie, you bootstrap it, you get it cut, it's ready to go. It's done. What do you do? What do you do at that point? What's the next move? The next move was uh, film festivals. Okay. And so that's where we started and, um, we entered it every film festival that you can imagine uh, and shoreline actually did that our sales company okay. and, um, they they entered in any one that you can imagine you know we we probably entered it in and so then we're starting to get the the rejection letters back yeah. <laughs> and over and over and and oh, uh, to, to the point you know it was just like, it was like we were like i don't think it's giving giving it away but i remember our director uh saying to me did we make twirl? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we're like, no, I don't think so. And, and, and then all of a sudden we, we get a call and Shoreline said we got into a, a pretty decent film festival in Spain, Madrid, uh, called Nocturna and they loved our film and, cool. and wanted, wanted to, to put it in there. So we freaking fly to Spain and uh I've never been to Europe, you know, the the farthest I've gone, you know, is from California to, to Wisconsin on a plane. So is it like a ten hour flight? We get there. It's just beautiful place, beautiful people, beautiful amazing food. And uh in one sense it was just it was just a great time being there and then but then you're getting nervous, you know, to show your film, like, you know, I think the day of I'm like are they even gonna like this? You know? Yeah. And, and, and it was, that was just nerve wracking. And then, and then we were, we were following, um, can't remember his name. Who's the director that directed, uh, Werewolf, uh, in London? Or American? Um, Werewolf. um, God, Land. spot. um, uh, Landis, yeah. He, uh, th there was like an anniversary thing. So we, they, they were showing that movie and then he did a, a uh interview like a so we're listening to landis speak and then our, our movie is next oh man <laughs> so, so like 400 people are there in the theater and it, it's we we got the midnight show which i think is yeah. great oh yeah it's perfect for your movie yeah and and so so they he goes off and then the, some people leave and then, but then more people coming in and it was cool to see the line of people come in and, uh, and, um, some people even recognized us, which was a trip. And, uh, uh, my mom was there. People asked my mom oh, wow. for an autograph. So that was real fun. And, uh, uh, so that was, that was just a joy. And then, and then we sit down and watching the, the, the movie starts and the laughs start to trickle in and they were just, they, they ate it up and we were just like, yeah. Oh no. So all that work that went through it, all that, that frustration and all that, you know, the, the crying in the showers, um, were <laughs> just like worth it. You know, you're just like, it was, it was, it was exactly what we wanted. It was, 
it was um it was just a great feeling and then and then we all of a sudden got into more film festivals and things were were going but i i made a joke to my partners that said we should we should uh make a trailer for the movie and put like you know sundance yeah becca you know <laughs> Uh, you know, cans rejected. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would have been into that. See the movie that that festivals don't want you to see. <laughs> you know, that's so my first, my first, like we can't, we can't do that. But uh, that was those was just one of the jokes that we had. But once, yeah, once we got into that film festival, it just seemed like all of a sudden we got on a, a roll, and and then it was just like, where, when do we actually release it? You know. And, uh, and that was finally, uh, for the U.S., uh, rights, um, was, um, October, uh, the 13th, Friday the 13th, um, uh, for, for Amazon. And, uh, and we're still trying to get it on other platforms. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so, I mean, yeah. Kind of like, I mean, can you go, like, what's kind of involved in that? I mean, like, is it just a matter of submitting it and getting it to, like, someone to submit it to and, just like like similar to the film festival submission process, or yeah, it, it's kind of weird because in one hand, you know, when you make when you make a movie and you have like a sales rep that you're attached to, you're kind of giving your movie away in a sense, and and they're they're trying to get it out there more. And um, but at the same time, I feel um, that that we can still promote it, and that's that's why I've kind of I, I've taken over like the Twitter account on House Harker. Yeah. And, and the um, Facebook page, and I've been just, just kind of reaching out to the horror community because I I don't think I realized how big it was for one, yeah, and how you know no one knew the heck we were, you know. So and so I've just been starting dialogue with people, and then and then I would leave it up to them if they wanted to like talk about the movie or see the movie, and and it's been kind of working out, and that's kind of how with with you, you know, I saw that you posted a, a top 10 list of best vampire movies on Amazon or Netflix and all that. And I was just like, Oh my God, <laughs> just totally surprised. And, 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 uh, reached out to you and just said, uh, you know, I was honored that we made that list. It was, it was fantastic. Well, and I've got, um, I had it on one other list and I know I'll have it on again, uh, in October because October every single week, I'm going to have a list of like, horror movies in some genre or something. So I'm sure that'll make like a funny horror movie list. But uh, I've, I, you know, people come back and they say, hey, I just watched House Harker or whatever they just watched. They'll tell me what they just watched and that they liked it. And, you know, some people, obviously, it's the internet. You get negative comments. I don't think I've got one negative comment on Harker. Everybody oh, said that they liked it. Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not making that up because yeah. I just put up um, – uh, anytime I do a horror movie list, it just takes off. It's just so that the horror movie fans are just rabid. They can't get enough. They want to watch more. And I put one up last week, and it's got like sixty thousand views. Like it's it's they easily get the most out of anything I can put up. Like I put up a list of dramas on Netflix, and I think it has like two thousand views. And it's been, for like, it's been up for like a month, you know. So if that's any comparison, but um. There was one on there, which so we can kind of jump into uh, some some other movies. But like there was one that's kind of making the rounds, and my guest last week uh, was in it, and uh, it's called Terrifier, and it's about a like a it's a slasher movie with a clown. It's and, Netflix, right? Yeah, and that one uh, has some of the most polarizing comments. So I only get people saying that they love it or that it's stupid and they absolutely hate it, which I think that's an okay response to have for yeah. a movie, too. That's if if it's, it, it inspires passion in somebody, then yeah. great. But um, So yeah. let's jump on to some movies. You, you recommended Corbin Nash. <laughs> I didn't recommend it. Okay, yeah. you, you so, asked me if I watched it. Okay. I was interested in what you thought of Corbin Nash, uh, first off. <laughs> but, yeah, let's dive into that. <laughs> so this one, we, we may have spoilers for Corbin Nash. I, yeah. I'm not too worried about Corbin Nash spoilers on the show. But um, I, I did like the concept of the, like, the vampires um, uh, having this, like, 
battle royale kind of thing and just keeping people as slaves and like I liked that and I liked some of the like visual visual style of it especially for as small as the budget appeared to be I like that but um uh Corey, Corey Feldman was way too much in that movie it was he was he was throwing it out there. That's for sure. He was he was swinging for the fences. I think I think I think I think it bits in my opinion. Bits. I think he was he 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 bunted a couple and got on base a few times. If and I'm making those puns because there is that storyline of Corbin Nash. His father uh, was a baseball player, and. Uh, you know, and not at you know day he would play baseball. At night he would hunt uh, vampires. And in my with in my thing was I wanted to see that fucking movie. <laughs> like that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But to me, so the movie was like the first episode in a series that could be really cool. It was like the origin yeah. episode. And then uh, Feldman was in it. I don't disagree. There was a couple of moments where I was kind of surprised by him. He was yeah. in it way too much. That character was way too weird and creepy. And I also thought it was really weak of him, considering he doesn't really have like other movies he needs to be in, to have – he did not shave his eyebrows. They covered up his eyebrows with like rubber and then painted eyebrows on. It was all like clumpy. It looked like a makeup job. It's like, dude, just – if you're going to yeah. commit to this character, shave yeah. your eyebrows. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, anyway. I did not love. I did not love the movie. Yeah, and 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 neither did I. I I I felt like I could have though. I felt like it was close. I felt like just with a couple of tweaks uh, or a different story, um, even I, I, like at the end, I I kind of was like 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 the weird love story that they had with Corey Feldman and his like weird lover, you yeah. know. Which I'm like, I was kind of like with this guy, but. There, uh, there was a moment where I'm like, I kind of felt bad for that, for them, you know. It's like, how did they? I'm like, you know, that was a moment where I, I kind of felt, I kind of felt something, and and that was, those were the moments where it's like, oh, he got me there. I felt like if he just, the thing is, I, I don't want to say he's, Corey Feldman is a bad actor because he's in some of my favorite freaking yeah. movies, you know. I mean, he's in Goonies, Stand by Me, um, just. A, a list of movies that that just I, I even like you know some of his well the burbs i thought he was fantastic in the yeah, burbs yeah um uh was that even that weird movie they did uh, uh with license to drive with Corey Haim it was ridiculous but it was yeah. a teen movie back then it was i i haven't seen it since then so yeah. like it. But, I, I probably hadn't seen it since i was too young to drive yeah right so i mean at that point it's like oh this is fun you know but he was Fantastic. So I was really rooting for the movie and wanted to like the movie, you know, so I wasn't going in there like, oh, this is going to suck and he's going to suck and or anything like that. It was it was like, like, what do we got? You know, you know, and uh, and from what I heard and the, the stories and stuff, it sounded like he was, you know, giving it everything he had out there. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, and I, I agree. With you. It had a good vibe to it. It just didn't yeah. really land. I don't think it worked in the end. Yeah, I don't uh, think it's a movie you could recommend. <laughs> no, it, 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 and it, it, that's so tough for me because I uh, I recommend – man, there are weeks where I'll recommend 30 different movies, you know, between Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I don't watch 30 movies in a week. I've seen most of them, but I do have to watch quite a few in order to get that number up, and it's like if I watch something that I can't recommend, it's a complete waste of time. It's, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's, I just burned an hour and a half that, yeah. that, that I'm precious. And you can, so, and how many kids are you in right now? Three Eight, now. Three. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, we are, are in the throes see, of. See this here? Yeah. Yeah. No, nope, yeah. I'm familiar. <laughs> I've got two I have to go through to get up to this room. Yeah. We so, uh, twins, boy and girl, two and a half, and then a, a, a boy we introduced last week. Oh, that's right. Um, We're like in the same because my son's two and a half, and then our daughter's five months. So, okay, same so, yeah, kind of time span. Same, same, same boat. No sleep, losing your mind, forgetting things. Oh um, uh, yeah, you know. I am because <laughs> she was sleeping really, really well, and then just for the last month, it's like her. She was sleeping through the night, and then now, no, and she's got to get up, and it's like 
you know, we were supposed yeah. to be doing this when my wife was on maternity leave, and now, but we're doing it now, yeah. and it's just oh, like, yeah. exhausting. Uh, it's nuts. It's but, nuts. but we we're we're in the throes of all right. Are we gonna are we gonna take measures to not have a third, or are we gonna roll the dice and maybe see if we want to do three? And I'm I'm leaning towards not rolling the dice. <laughs> well, we uh, we. We were we're a little older, and so we were like, well, you know, we wanted to try one more, but we I don't think we knew it was going to kick in that as quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'd have a year, you know, but like yeah. like a month and a half of trying. Oh, you're pregnant, and it yeah, was exciting, but it's also at the same time like, what have we done? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and uh, how how are we going to do this? And uh, so there's all those nerves and stress, and then when he's here, you know, you're just like, oh my god, he's. He's amazing, and, and it was just it was a joy to, to meet him. And uh, the, the time that me and my wife had in the hospital was was a lot of fun, and just seeing, holding him and stuff. And it was kind of interesting. Like the the first two hours he was born, I looked at my wife. I'm like, I don't want to jinx him, but so far having one is so much easier <laughs> because yeah. I was like going back and forth in the recovery room with the twins and like bathing one and then going to the other one, bathing that one and giving it to him or giving it to my wife and then going to the other one. And, and for the, the whole stay, my wife was just spent time with him, you know, and, and to the point where I'm like, I'm, can I hold them? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that was, that was really cool that she got to, to spend that time and, and bond with him. And, uh, but yeah, being a, being a parent is weird. <laughs> Yeah, I don't disagree. It's different than I thought it was going to be, and it's, but it's not. Oh. Now we waited till we were in our thirties, and we were married for six years before we started trying. Oh. Uh, so we, it's really not that bad. Like the the, the especially when it was with just my son, it was just a one. Yeah. We're like, this is not. I mean, if I was twenty and didn't have a support system, and yeah. like I would be at night, it would be the worst thing. Yeah, ever. We have a good support but, system too. Yeah. Well, yeah. we unfortunately do not. We've got, oh. we've got a, we've got a great family, but we live in Atlanta, and oh. our family is dispersed. We have no family here, uh, so that makes it a little tough. But you know, yeah. we can deal. Yeah. You're making it work. You're making it work. Yeah. You have to. And the thing, I think the kids, I think they, it brings the best and sometimes the worst out of you. You know, I remember I, I've had arguments with a two and a half year old to the point where I'm thinking to myself, I'm having an argument with a two and a half year old. <laughs> yeah, I just had one about an hour and a half ago. So. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I, uh, mine too, uh, almost. But yeah, it's, and, and then and then you just feel like a piece of crap the whole day, and you're just like, how, how do I how do I not ever do that again? And you know, but it's but at the same time, I, I there's times where I remember when my twins were born, and I'm like three in the morning, and I'm like you know walking the babies back and forth, and you know coddling them and and singing them songs, and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, who's this who's this guy? You know. You know, who, where's that, you know, 16-year-old that would eat anything for a dollar, you know? <laughs> <laughs> There's hot peppers. Here's a dollar. Okay. You know, and, and here I am, you know, um, taking care of, of, of twins. And and, uh, uh, and that first first two years, I was the stay-home dad. So my my wife um, actually opened up a, a, her own business. Uh, she has her own spa. And she she had the challenge of just supporting us you know financially. Yeah. and then i had the challenge of not knowing how to raise kids <laughs> you know, yeah, so know. just jumping right in you know so I, I, that's kind of my nature i suppose that's with the the filmmaking we just i just kind of jumped in with my team and and then with parenting you're just like well i don't have time to think about if i'm ready or not <laughs> yeah once it happens once they're here it's yeah you're, you're in it you're doing it yeah, you it's happening. Have to do it, and you you make it work, right? Yeah, because I, I you know, you're right. It does make you a different person to the point where like, I, I'm I'm notoriously impatient, like with my family, like not with my family, but my family knows me to be notoriously impatient. And I remember my mom was visiting once. I think this is right before my daughter was born. But my son was acting up. He might have even swatted at my mom or something. And I took him out into the next room, like close the sliding glass door, set him in the chair. And she's outside. She's well. She's in the house, rather. She's watching me, and I just want to talk to him for a minute. And maybe two minutes go by, and I open the door. He kind of marches back in, apologizes, and sits up and starts eating his food. And her eyes just about popped out of her head. Like who? Who is this person 
that yeah. just went in there because I, you know, I didn't get on. I, yeah. I mean, I, you know, but it yeah. just makes you. We all have. It, it makes you a different person for sure. That's the best way to put yeah. it. Yeah, um, it does. Uh, what makes you want to be better, you know, when you screw up, you know, and and, and, and other things that you screw up in life, you know, you're yeah. mostly like, I don't, I don't care, you know. But it gives you, it does give you more patience. Yeah, more patience. Yeah. yeah, for sure. One I just watched, sort of in preparation for talking to you, but I've had okay. it on my list for a long time. Wolf Cop. Yes, I see. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I knew I needed to watch it. It just I never got around to it because another problem I have with movies is I'll have stuff on the list, and my wife sees a guy in a wolf costume stretched out in like a the a thriller pose with no shirt, and she's like, "I'm not watching that." I'm like, "Well, fuck. I guess I'll watch it another night." Yeah. So I got to postpone it. But I did watch it. I liked it. I I thought Maybe it was too. cool. It wasn't as funny as I thought it was going to be. It was bits and parts. There's yeah, it was it was a funny it was a funny concept. Yeah. But then a not so like there weren't like gags in it so much, you know, which is fine. That's the yeah. flavor of the movie. But yeah. then they, they have a sequel, and I don't know if it's available yet. It is. I don't know. Okay. Well, I know it came out. I don't know if it's available yet. But yeah. Yeah. Like, with another Wolf Cop. <laughs> I think it's another Wolf Cop. Yeah, yeah I don't think it's funny. Wolf Cop too. Yeah, this is funny. Another Forty Eight Hours at rip off. I think. Yeah. It, it, like the sim- similar poster, um, which I. Well, and I like the heavy, but, the heavy drinking cop and the. You know, uh, just the, the kind of hard edge, kind of like you guys yeah. with the good cop stuff. Like, that stuff's always fun to me. The lethal weapon kind of, yeah. kind of you know, satire. That's yeah, that's how we, we got our start and uh, for the web series and, and making uh, Good Cops, which was just a blast to do because we didn't, we we put our own time and money into that one and, and we didn't have to make any money back technically and we just had so much fun doing it and we just made each other laugh every time we talked about it, every time we, we worked on it and it was just it was one of those times I, I, I kind of miss it, you know, <laughs> like that that creative spark that you have with, with other people and with your collaborators and just making this ridiculous show that for some reason, when, when we would tell people on paper, they thought it was so stupid. And then when people were seeing it, they were laughing and they were liking it and they were commenting on it and they were sending it to friends and were just like, what happened? You know, and uh, that's kind of how we started. We were only going to do two episodes, but because people were starting to like it and, and passing it off and getting views, we're like, we, we need to have a story <laughs> so yeah. we sat down and we finished like you know an eight episode uh story that kind of you know we kind of were just making it up while we went yeah no it, I, I liked it you know it was a uh, fun watch and you can kind of watch a couple of them put it down come back to yeah. it so yeah. if if you're if you're listening on just a podcast i'm going to put links to all of this stuff in the description so links to house harker on Amazon, links to the good cop stuff on YouTube, so you can check out all the stuff uh, that these guys have done. Um, one that I found on, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, Night Watchmen yes. is on Amazon. Okay, I thought that one was pretty good. It definitely has like a decent budget, but I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't like it as much as uh, I wanted to, but I think I watched it on the tail of House Harger because it got recommended mm. because of it. Interesting. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it, and I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. And I and I don't always like characters that are just shit birds, just assholes. Yeah. You know, I usually like to root for the guy. But all these guys were pretty much shit birds. Like you wouldn't want to hang out with any of them. I don't think. You know, but for some reason I, they were likable to me. Like I, 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 loved, I thought they were funny. You know. Yeah, I would agree with that. You, you, they weren't likable, but you kind of like watching the three of them, yeah. the four of them, sort of like bouncing off of each other. Exactly. Um, they, they didn't feel as much like a like a comedy group. Like mm. they didn't feel as much like they knew each other as as you guys did, I guess. Oh, that's good. Um, you know, that, which they might not. They might not. They might have just yeah. been cast and kind of put in yeah. that thing. But that was cool. But my favorite, favorite, like just like. Gory Blood Fest of all time. I don't know if you've seen it or not. It's got two titles, but it's usually referred to as Dead Alive by Peter Jackson. Yes. I, Have you seen that? I've seen, um, I always feel like I've seen like bits and pieces of it. 
It's the one where the guy like straps a lawnmower around his chest and like walks through like the crowd. Of yeah, and then... it, like I've seen parts and bits of that. And then like in, in the house, too. I know yeah. Clayton showed me that. And, and the thing was, was the, the other Peter Jackson, the first one, uh, Bad Taste? Bad Taste, yeah. I thought I saw that movie, too, for years to the point where I was talking about Bad Taste um, in meetings. But I've just seen clips, apparently, oh. because I actually sat down like about six months ago and watched it. I was like, this movie's fucking amazing. Yeah. So fun. It was just, and I think, I think Dead Alive might be that as well. I don't know. Yeah. I know I've seen, like, you, I know I've seen that scene that you described to me, but at the same time, I'm like, have I seen the whole movie put together? I don't know. And I, that was like bad taste. Like, I would, I would tell, oh, bad taste is amazing. And, and then I never even saw the whole thing. Uh, yeah. and, and then when I did, I was blown away on how amazing it was. And then, and then to go watch some of the behind the scenes and, and read the articles and interviews and how he made that insane, insane. Yeah. And he's, he's two, at least two different characters in it. It's, yeah. And it's always, it's amazing to me. He plays Derek. I mean, yeah. yeah. His name's Derek. And he says, what was the line? Like, Derek's don't run. I use that all the time now. <laughs> Derek's don't run. <laughs> With the same guy that did the most epic trilogy yeah. in movie history, in terms of production, yeah. and just in terms of sheer production, because like a significant percentage of the population of New Zealand worked on the Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it was a major part of their economy for like a decade. And then uh, for him to his first movies to be these really cool little like grindhouse gross out uh, movies, but I'm telling you, Dead Alive. If you get your hands on it this Halloween, it is my okay. favorite Halloween movie. I watch it every Halloween. It's you'll love it with with the House Harker thing. By the end of that movie, everybody's c- completely covered in blood, just like Harker, and it's 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 funny and it's gross. So that one's that one's my that that was the Godfather in that genre to me. Right. Yeah. Um, it's paced out well. It's it's full of stuff. So and so much so, like we have a uh, we have a big Halloween party every year. That's like what we that's our big thing is we have people over and it's around my birthday, and I'll put it on the TV but like on mute because we have music and people will just stop and get hypnotized by it. Wow. That's like awesome. what what do you have on this TV? Right <laughs> <now>? <laughs> Turn off the music. Turn off the volume. That's great. I am. I. I do. I. I now that I actually feel like I haven't seen it, I, I'm going to have to at least try to like w- sit down and just be like, did I see this or not? Because I. I honestly can't say. I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, it could have been. I mean, the movie's like twenty twenty years old now. Yeah. It's not. You know, you could have seen it. You know, yeah. fifteen years ago and not, not remembered it. But uh, did you happen to get a chance? It's only about for a week or less. Did you happen to get a chance to see Mandy? Yep. I'm so sad about it. I'm so yeah. sad about it. I was, I think I was more excited about that than any like the Star Wars movies that have been coming out and all that. I did once, you know. So I was just like, when, when I saw the trailer, when I, actually, even when I didn't see the trailer, when I just heard that it went to Sundance and and read what it was about and saw the poster, I was just like, what is this? And we had to wait like months just to see a trailer. Yeah. And then when we saw the trailer, I was just like. <laughs> And um, I really, really want to see it in a theater. Well, I want to see it in a movie theater if I can. But I don't yeah, know. if you can. I mean, you're in, you're are, yeah. you're in LA. Well, I a little bit further. I, I'm in Central Coast now, close to like okay. San Luis Obispo. But you're in an area where you could potentially yeah. see it. Like, yeah, it's even worked. in Atlanta. It's it was in theaters last Thursday. That's it. It's not playing anywhere else anymore. Yeah, so had to go. Um, yeah, but I, I don't even know why I'm asking you, because I didn't go see anything for the past five months. I'm only just now starting to get back into the theater. Yeah, yeah, with babies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. might not be able to see it, unfortunately, in the theater. I don't know. It's it's one of those things where if it happens, it happens. But I'm so excited to see it. I love Nick Cage. I love all of his crazy films. I think yeah. he's... I don't even his bad ones. It's he's always fun to watch. Yeah, I I have yeah. not watched his like more recent movies. Like yeah. I, I just I've watched I started watching a couple just for ironic purposes, and I really had a hard time getting into them. But I have always liked him. Yeah, yeah. You should you should do an opposite one for like a 
for like one week where you just do because you say you watch movies sometimes that you don't like and you don't know what to do with it. What if you did like a top ten uh, horrible movies streaming? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> top 10 movies. Well, I, I've you even, shouldn't watch. <laughs> I've got a list. There are ten Nicolas Cage movies that have come out in the past like two years because <laughs> he does like four or five yeah. a year. That are all on Netflix. They all look horrible. Uh, I thought about just binging them for like a week and then doing a video on those. Uh, so I might do that. That would be fun. That would be fun. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm suggesting. I, I want yeah. one. My vote is yes. <laughs> yeah, no, and people ask me all the time, like, do a top ten worst movies, but it's like, you don't realize how many terrible movies there are. That, that, like, that spectrum is so I've, wide. I've gone to wormhole. I've yeah, <laughs> I've I've dipped my toe in it, and uh, I like the ones that are at the the top end of the the horrible movies, like Troll Two. Okay. Uh, I love you know stuff like that, but those are regarded as like the best terrible movies. But there are so many that are just god awful from beginning to end. That it's like. Why? Yeah, so yeah, it's like it's like, do you want to make a movie that's so bad it's good, or do you want to make a good movie like, or 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 when I don't, I feel like those the people that that make movies that are so bad it's good. I bel- I truly believe they're making a movie that they think it's going to be amazing, and 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 then and, and I think that's why we're able to watch it because there was actual love and and work that went into these movies that are just so bad, but we are watching them anyway. Um, because there's something in there, that, this charm about it. And I don't want to say Bad Taste is a bad movie at all, but it is a B movie, And but there's so much charm in that movie that, you know, you're you're not going to get out of these some of these. Like I think, like, King Kong, Peter Jackson's King Kong is a much better movie than Bad Taste, but does not nearly get close to the charm that Bad Taste has, I think, in my opinion. No, I would I would agree with that 100%. And, and with Bad Taste, it is put together well where you can follow the story so it's not muddy it's not it's not you know you're 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 not watching necessarily a bad movie but you're watching maybe bad production design that was done with some kind of flair yeah exactly it was yeah i definitely don't want to say bad taste is so bad it's good because i know it's a good movie it's it's a good it's a good fun charming movie about cannibal aliens yeah, and the the wheels just come off of that one. Like the, first, the it's fairly slow in the beginning, where the, oh. like Peter Jackson's on the cliff and he's playing the two characters shooting at each other and the the whole thing. But then by the time they like the house starts kind of coming apart and stuff, and oh. the aliens are running around, the, it it just turns into this crazy like uh, like planet terror kind like oh. grindhouse kind of a thing. That's just like I couldn't believe it was like. There was like this shootout, and they're running, and they're in the muscle car, and they're shooting out of it. I was like, this has gone like up to 11, like out of nowhere. And then the ending with the, yeah. the ship, and oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Like, and then I saw some of the making of that, how they did that. It's insane. Just crazy stuff. And that's that's when, you know, nowadays it's like, I mean, those stories, when you, you hear about it, that, that kind of sold your movie. But now it's like. It's, it's to a point where it's it's great in one sense. You can make a movie for very, fairly cheap, but so many people are making yeah. um, these movies, and so many people have these same stories as you. And, and it's like, why is your movie unique? You know, now it's to the point where like we don't care how many blizzards you went through, or how much right. you know blood you had, to, or how many windows got broken. We want to see a good movie, you know. And that's that's kind of where at the end, you know, it's just it doesn't matter. Because back then, even like the, like Kevin Smith movies and stuff like that, or Robert Rodriguez, there was just a charm about how these movies were made. And now we're all kind of doing that in, in, in one sense. They were kind of the pioneers, I suppose. Yeah, um, yeah, the technology is so cheap. Anybody can do it now. And yeah. I, I would agree. It's got to have something. And, and there's so many available. I mean, yes. that's that's got to be part of the problem with so many. Harker is, you're on Amazon Prime, which is great, but... Man, it, does Amazon Prime do a horrible job of recommending stuff? Yeah, they I just, mean, I don't even know how I found it to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I, really, I, I, I might have found it on a Google search. Wow. I mean, it, it might have come up in a recommended because I dig deep, 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 and 
I, I, I couldn't tell you. I, I'm constantly looking. The amount of time I spend up looking, <laughs> it's just outrageous. I have to do it when I have to do it when my wife is like putting the kids to sleep or something. Because I like if she were to sit there with me, she'd just pull yeah. her hair out. She's like, it's been an hour. We could have watched something by now. Yeah. Oh yeah. I do that same thing. I, I've I've done it in like 15 minutes. I was like, are you still looking? <laughs> like, yes, I can't find anything. But yeah, I just like looking at the titles. I like looking at the the and then on, if I'm on Amazon, I watch all the trailers. So I'm just wasting yeah. more time. <laughs> Well, if I spend an hour, I'll get, you know, maybe yeah. five, six potential ones to watch at, yeah, at least. That's you know, true. I'll put them. I'll, I'll get a bunch if I spend the time. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, we, I used to spend that much time in Blockbuster when those things existed. This is true. This is true. Blockbuster. Oh, so sad. Just, one, just, there's one left. Just the one. I know how people are, are getting all, you know, sad and weepy about it, about Blockbuster. And, and, and I have good, some memories, good memories about Blockbuster. But I also remember just hating the people that worked at Blockbuster. Am I the only one? <laughs> they just didn't care. They, they were just dicks because yeah. they were, they were, you know, the, the place where you would get videos. Like, you know, like that we, I like going to the mom and pop ones, but they didn't have the newer titles, you know. Blockbuster yeah. was Netflix, you know, and they knew it. And you go in and they were just, you know, I'd try to ask, what do you recommend? I don't go look at the recommend list. What about, well, and they know? would just hire, they, they hired yeah. whoever filled out the application. Exactly. They weren't, you know, they didn't have just like movie geeks coming in there. All that. I mean, I'm sure plenty of them did, but, you know, the, the mom and pops were the place where they'd be like, oh, you should watch this or that. And that's kind of. And that's kind of where I'm trying to find my my niche is, is yeah. uh, to kind of be that replacement online. So I'm trying to develop that a little bit. But I think that people missing that is what's helping me kind of develop yeah. something here is because that, that that element is completely gone, which yeah. it's not going to come back, you know, in the way that it was before. It's true. And what, what, like, but what was interesting, though, is just seeing Blockbuster, they were at the King, you know, they were – they were taking out mom and pops videos. Yeah. They were, they were, like these little mom and pop shops were going out of business because of Blockbuster. Yeah. And then Netflix, I mean, just dismantled them. <laughs> well, Netflix, I don't know if you know, Netflix actually, when Netflix, it was before they're like, they had like a weird logo. It was back when they were really small. It was before they were turning a profit. They approached Blockbuster and they were like, hey, you know, we don't want to compete with you guys, but we'll. Let's let's you know buy us. We'll control your online portion, and you be the stores. And uh, the CEO turned it down, and he was he was fired within like twelve months because Netflix just exploded after that. And that guy was canned. He's like famous for for screwing that up and getting fired. That's like a you big know that story. Yeah. You know that story. Oh my gosh, that's even better. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you, you, I'm not. I'm not like, oh, thank God, people are getting fired. You know, you don't want people to lose jobs, and that happened. It, it is um, a good story, but, but it is just, it's us crazy. <laughs> that is a crazy story. Wow, wow, wow. So, well, cool, man. It was really good having you on. Um, I've enjoyed talking to you. What, real quick before you go, do, do you, you kind of were. I don't know if you were joking with me or not, but you were talking about maybe getting to see some werewolves in the future. Are you guys? At least kicking the can around, or we have kicked the can around several times, and I, I think we we get really excited uh, sometimes um, um, on ideas, and sometimes I'll send a message, and, and vice versa, the I, other guys will send a message, and we we've had a few meetings. We sat down, we have a, a, a decent outline on where we would like the story to go. Um, it was supposed to be a trilogy, actually. Oh wow, I can see that. We have, we have uh, another idea for the third one we don't have a a a script per se but we have a bunch of notes and we we have a good idea on where it would go i think at this point we're also kind of like just wondering you know where the budget would be so we could kind of write that movie rather than writing a movie bigger than the budget that we already had so that was an idea that we've been kind of kicking around um but i know we'd all want to but we all want you know, to be married and and you know, <laughs> have kids and, 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 and you know, be able to support yeah. your family and yeah. all that. You know, it's 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 one of those things, you know, where where we we love to do it, but you know, 
it all depends on, you know, if we could get a budget enough. I mean, this one was kind of our Hail Mary pass, you know. Yeah. And uh, just be like, hey, you know, let's let's stop talking about it. Let's do it. Um, let's put our, you know, our, I don't know, was there money where our mouths is or whatever and uh, see see what we got. And then and then hope. I think we were just like, well, maybe we'll get more work out of this. And any crazier things have happened. I, if I've learned anything, never say never, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I know I, I personally would like to, to make another one. I personally would like to make Good Cops the movie one day. Yeah. Uh, my partners have no interest. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> they're like, they moved on from it. I don't, for some reason, I, I just love, I mean, they love those characters as well, but they're also like, I don't know if we want to go revisit that again, but I just love those characters so much for some reason. I just, yeah. it's just, it's just a weird, it's a weird show. And it's over the top, and it's my kind, my kind of sentiment. And the host Harker is too, you know. Um, but for good cops, we really are like on a level eleven on just over the top, you know. <laughs> and uh, host Harker, I think we kind of brought it down a little bit, you know, because we felt like these characters were supposed to be real, even though the subject matter was ridiculous, you know. So that was the the challenging part of that. Yeah, like like a house Harker, the the movie's not family friendly, but the guys are. Like yeah. the, the three yeah. guys definitely are, which was interesting. Yeah. yeah, we in all of our stuff, we kind of add a we pepper in a little heart to it, you know. And I always thought house Harker, even though it's it was has swear words, uh, violence, you know, excessive violence in some parts. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it it also is it's about family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? and and yet. There's like vampires flying around and getting staked and blood spraying everywhere. Yeah. And, and the core, though, to me, it was always about family, you know. And and no matter what, you have to stick with family, you know. So uh, stick or stake, I don't know. Yeah. I was trying to put a fun fun in there, but it didn't work out. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you record stuff live. So. Yeah. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, man, it was really good talking to you. Uh, we'll definitely do it again, especially if you ever get anything going. But even if you don't, we will talk movies some other time. Whatever you want, man. You can just hit me up. It. Uh, but it was great talking to you. Anybody listening, check out I Have Bloody Good Time, House Harker, on Amazon Prime. You can watch it right away. And uh, I'll put a link to some of their other projects. Even the uh, – I'll find the uh, Stormtrooper Always Sunny in Philadelphia thing you guys did because yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, yeah, so there'll be links to all that in the description. Yeah. Go check it out. Support support uh, their project. It'll help uh, my show as well. And yeah. thanks a lot, Derek. Let's do it again. All right, Darren. Have a good one. So thanks for listening to that interview. Uh, I really appreciate all of you, especially the ones that listen to this whole thing. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought, uh, not just of Derek as a guest, but what you think of like that type of a guest. You know, somebody that's not necessarily famous, but that has stories to tell around movies, that has a passion for movies. Uh, if you like that, I feel like it's something a little different than what's out there. Um, I'm into it, and I want to do more like it, but I only can do it with your support so just let me know what your thoughts are on it i'm really really curious and uh we will be back next week probably no guest as i don't have one lined up but uh i'll be back and i do have another guest a great guest actually a scream queen an up-and-coming scream queen uh for later in october so hopefully that works out but thanks for listening and you will hear me on the next one